I want to uh, tell you the first thing that I'd been telling the people in Atlanta, and I think this is very important. There are two things you should always carry with you on your person. Something to write with and something to write on. Always. Even if you go to the corner store. So those of you who brought something to write with and something to write on, make it available to yourselves quickly. But remember, always have something to write with and something to write on with you at all times. It's very important. Ladies, you never know when you might meet that multimillionaire <laughs> and you'll want to take down his phone number. And when you condition your mind for prosperous ideas and right ideas, why, they will be coming into your mind from all directions. And you should always be prepared. Even if you just dash out to the corner store, take you something to write with and something to write on. That's very important. You see, in this way, you're always ready. And as Reverend Ike has told us before, whatever you are ready for is ready for you. You see, and in every way you have to be ready. You see, the trouble is, sometimes people want things that they're not ready for. And every time you think of something good that you want, ask yourself the question, am I ready for this? Because when you're ready for it, it will happen, it will come to pass. And always be ready for good ideas, for right ideas, for prosperous ideas. And this may seem like a very simple and a very mundane point that I've given you right off the bat here, but I cannot overemphasize the importance. And I'll guarantee you just the mental action of being sure to include something to write with and something to write on in your, on your person at all times will also precondition you for constructive ideas. You see, that's another thing about the mind. When you make yourself ready for something, your mind proceeds to produce it. When you, pre when you mentally prepare for something, your mind proceeds to produce it. I want to say it again, and I want you to write it down. When you mentally prepare for something, your mind proceeds to produce it. This is why I've given you certain little mental techniques and little gimmicks from time to time. Like saying to you, if you want some new clothes, go and clean out your closets. Make some space in there. Even at the pr at present time, if you don't have any money to buy a new wardrobe, take a few dollars and buy some of those nice little wardrobe organizers. Those nice little things that you put your shoes in. Now, I tell you to do this. Get you some of those plastic boxes and, and so on that you put your gloves in. And just organize your wardrobe even if you don't have the means at the time to fill it up. What are you doing? You're preparing for good. You're making room for good. And whenever you prepare for something, your mind proceeds to produce it. This is why, to speak of another gimmick for a moment that I've given to people, and I don't mind calling these things gimmicks. In one service in Macon, Georgia, and it has never stopped working, I told all of the people who wanted an automobile to stand out in the yard or wherever they wanted, they were going to park that car. I didn't explain at that time all the mental mechanics behind it, and there were people who perhaps would not have understood it. But here again, it doesn't really matter if you don't understand the mechanics behind it. It'll work. I don't understand how a car works, but I get into one of those Rolls Royces and turn the key, you know, and it starts up and I go where I want to go. <laughs> See, it doesn't even know that I don't understand the mechanics and doesn't care. And so it is with the law of mind. It works. But 
by having a person stand out in that yard where they're going to park the car, the mind made, the mind makes a space for that car. And the mind makes a space for that car and proceeds to produce it. I want to be terribly redundant about this. Whatever you mentally prepare for, the mind proceeds to produce it. And the mind will proceed to produce it with ease. That's another thing. So back to the new clothes project for a moment. If you don't have money for the new clothes you'd like to have, don't go beating your head against the wall about that and about the how. You prepare your closets. Even if you don't have enough money at the moment to buy all those fancy wardrobe organizers, put some brand new clean newspaper on the shelves. <laughs> you see, that's why I say you can't lose with the stuff I use. I'll fix it so any fool, <laughs> as the Bible says, even a fool will understand. <laughs> all you have to bring me is your mind and I'll fix it for you. <laughs> so if you can't buy those fancy organizers You just clean your closet up And put some new newspaper on the shelf But the more you fool around with that closet And take pains with it And ooh and ah And fiddle around with it The better Because your mind knows That you're preparing for something and here again, you know, not even trouble comes to you unless you're ready for it. <laughs> unless you have in some way prepared for it. The same way you have to prepare your mind for money. You have to be ready for money. And all of this ties right into the formal subject, how to get some money. And I got this subject from a man that I met on the street. He said, are you Reverend Ike? I said, yes. I said, uh, why don't you come to our church sometimes? He said, oh, Reverend, I've got plenty of religion. Just tell me how to get some money. <laughs> That's the way it is with a whole lot of you. You've got plenty of religion. Most of us have got plenty of religion. You take me, I've had plenty of religion. I've been baptized twice. Had plenty of religion, baptized and simonized, <laughs> catechized. So most of us have had quite a religious experience. If you want to get money as well as any other thing, you have to condition your mind for that. So in getting money, and I want you to write this down, money condition your mind. And it is possible to money condition your mind. You can establish a money producing tendency in your mind. I want to put this in the first person. I can establish a money producing tendency in my mind. Together, I can establish a money producing tendency in my mind. We're going to take it even closer than that. And we're going to make a definite affirmation. I establish a money-producing tendency in my mind. Together, I establish a money-producing tendency in my mind. And that's possible, and people do it. I've done it. So let's look at the other side of the coin for a moment. Why do the so-called poor people stay poor? Because they have a poverty-producing tendency established in their minds. I know that chokes you a little. People who stay sick all the time, what is it? There is a sickness-producing tendency established in their minds. But you see here we teach you to turn that around and to establish a health producing tendency in your mind, a happiness producing tendency in your mind, a love producing tendency. 
a success and prosperity producing tendency and a money producing tendency in your mind. There's an old proverbial expression about some people who seem to be so-called lucky. And I heard it said of one man who was so-called lucky once, as you know, he's the kind of fella that could fall into an outhouse and come out smelling like roses. <laughs> what they mean is that for some reason or the other, there's a good fortune producing tendency established in this man's life. Because this is the kind of man that doesn't permit everything to shake him. Regardless of what happens, it doesn't, he doesn't let it get to him. I read the autobiography of Aristotle Onassis some time ago, and one of the things that I noted about him was the fact that no matter how much, may have been, how much money may have been lost in a deal on a given day, he never worried about it. He worked very diligently every day in conducting his international empire, but and every night he parted until the wee, wee hours of the morning, and when it came time for him to party, he didn't let any of the so-called losses bother him. Here again, let me say to you that happiness produces wealth, and write that down and say it with me. Happiness produces wealth. And happiness produces health. You see, you have to establish some patterns in your life, some happy patterns. Even the prophet gives it to us in the words of the scripture. The joy of the Lord is what? Your strength. This is why I tell these people who have these uh, different kinds of religions that make them miserable, get the hell rid of it. <laughs> Learn how to be happy. Learn how to rejoice. Learn how to be glad because positive ideas can work in the joyful mind. You can money condition your mind. You can health condition your mind. You should.